G'day viewers. When I first decided to lash out and invest in an 8 foot tank, the first problem I came across was where to fit it in the house because the only wall big enough to fit an 8 foot tank was in the dining room. But we already had the dining tables and chairs in there so that posed a bit of a problem. Well, the solution viewers, stick it in the laundry and cut a hole into the dining room so we can still see it. And if you want to find out how I did it, stay tuned. Righto viewers, step one of any good project is the artist's impression and here's ours. This is the exact size the tank was going to be. So this made it pretty easy to move it around to get it centered in the wall and make sure it was going to be high enough that those dining chairs didn't whack into it when someone slid backwards from the table. And so once I had that in the right spot, it was just a matter of drilling holes through the wall. So when we got to the other side, we knew exactly where it was going to go. And here's the view from the other side, which was the laundry. Now you might notice that there's not really eight feet anywhere there to fit a tank. So that means the laundry tub was gonna to have to come out and so was the linen cupboard and all the other cupboards. And there'd be just enough room for the tank, the washing machine and not much else. Now here's where the real fun starts. This is demolition day one. So all the cupboards are out. I cut the plaster away from where the tank had to go and of course found out that the power for the lights and the power points in the hallway ran straight through where the tank had to go. So yay, that was a bonus. And there's the laundry tub removed and so I'm going to have to move all the plumbing and the drains for the washing machine as well. So there's the plumbing for the washing machine moved and then moved the drain inside the wall because the washing machine is gonna go over the top of the old drain so that wouldn't work. So anyway, so we worked around it. And there's the washing machine all plumbed up, ready to go, minus the laundry tub. And there on the left is our nice steel stand all ready to go, so I know what height the tank's gonna be. And because I wanted the tank to finish hard up against the wall, I didn't want it recessed in the width of the studs that you see on a lot of tanks that are built in the walls. So what I did, I cut, pulled out the centre studs that were going to be in the way and then cut the other ones down so the tank stand itself became the studs. And you can see there where it's notched out the base plate and then notched out the existing studs to fit the stand in and the stand is just glued straight up against the plasterboard. And at this point, viewers, I probably should mention that, yeah, it's not a load-bearing wall, so pulling those studs out is not going to be a drama. And I've just used a piece of framing timber for a lintel across the top, and that's just support the little bit of wall that's left and stop that ceiling from sagging. And just to make sure, I've run a big piece of timber across the two trusses, and that's screwed on those angle plates there, just to support the top of the frame, so it's all good. Now this is down underneath the stand where I got the Sparky in and he rerouted all the wiring and installed a couple of power points down below and I've just used that sound absorbing foam just in case there was going to be any noise so we couldn't hear it out in the dining room. And here's it all finished with some nice ply and you can see the new power points there. So the stand's done, time to move on to the tank. But quickly before we move on to the tank, Here's where the washing machine's going to go, all the plaster's in, the waterproofing's done, the plumbing's ready to go. And then I just ran a bit of waterproofing up around the frame just in case any moisture gets up in there. We don't end up with any drama later on. And I also had some zinc flashing folded up. It's only about 1.6mm and it's just siliconed in just to make sure that no moisture gets up inside that wall and causes us any drama. Now the stand's ready, the wall's ready, and the hole in the wall's ready. Now it's time for the tank. Here's the tank, after six hours on the road, home from Melbourne, and it survived the trip pretty well. And it looks a million bucks. And now it's time for the scariest and most stressful part of this entire undertaking. Drilling the holes for the overflow. 
Now the most stressful part about doing this was the measuring, measuring again, and then re-measuring once more to make sure that it was in the exact spot they had to go because there was no second chances. But then once it began, it was, yeah, just a matter of drilling nice and slow and then keeping that water trickling on to keep it nice and cool and just being patient. And it didn't turn out to be too bad a job at all. And there we are, two nice holes, 12 mil glass, all done. Now it's time to move the tank into the house. So I did call on a few favours from a few big strong boys to give me a lift, but viewers, my motto is work smarter, not harder. So I made up a frame for the tractor, so it was just a matter of sliding it off the trailer, onto a tractor, and then driving it straight in the laundry like that. And I borrowed one of these workshop scissor lift platforms off a mate and so it was just a matter of sliding it off the tractor straight onto this and then lift it up and then just work it backwards and forwards to line it up with a the stand then it was just lift it over and off we go it was pretty easy considering then it was just the fiddly part just a matter of getting the foam underneath and then lining it up so it was level with the wall so it was a fair bit of backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards but we got there in the end Now here's the finished product. In the wall, beautiful. The major stressful part is over. Then it was just a case to make up an architrave frame to go around the outside. And it sits just level with that top water line. So when the tank's full, you can't see that line. And it looks really good. And then it was just a matter of finishing in the laundry, tiling off where the washing machine's got to go. And then we're pretty much done. And this is what the laundry looked like before. And now this is what it looks like now. So we have the washing machine in there and I've run an extra tap across to the tank so I can fill the tank nice and easy. And that's all there is left in there. No linen cupboard, no nothing. But anyway, who needs a linen cupboard when you've got a tank like that? Well viewers, that's the story of how I put a fish tank in a wall. So I hope you found this video interesting and got something out of it. So as always viewers, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out one of these videos.